How's it going everyone? We are doing a follow-up video on our discussion on the gold medal counts, the total medal counts, the country's ranking. I've been getting some messages, people are having discussions, uh, talking about that, okay, yeah, if you compare medal count, total medal count to gold medal count, gold medal count is, is more statistically sound, but it still has some blind spots, right? It still has some blind spots. It's still valuable to look at total metal count as well. And that's that's definitely true, uh, That which is why it's a good thing that total metal count is shown along with countries ranked by gold metal count, as, as you can see right here on the screen. What we're gonna talk about today is another ranking system, another ranking system based on it's also a point based system but what we're looking at is actually how much the metals are worth okay if you take a metal and you melt it down how much would that metal be worth right and if you add up the gold medal value the silver medal the bronze medal value and you create that kind of score for a country right how if at all would those rankings be different so so that's what we're going to talk about now, to set the context for that, right, to, to be able to look at it as a good comparison, we're going to look at the gold versus total metal count a little bit more uh, now that we actually have the, the final metal counts for the Olympics, right? So this is the final right here. And the gold and total metal count actually do behave similar, right? Countries who tend to win more medals in total, they also tend to win more gold medals in total. So if you were to rearrange countries based on total medal count instead of gold medal count, you'd still get a pretty similar result. Right? So if we look right here, you have United States. It's won the most golds and the most total, 113. China, second most golds, 38. Second most total, 88. Okay, Japan and Russia would actually switch spots, right? So you would have uh, Russia with 71 total, be third place and Japan would be fifth place with 58 if you were to rank based on total medal instead of gold medal count. Uh, they would still be in the top five, just third and fifth would switch. Britain would still be uh, in fourth place. And generally, as you look down, the gold medal count drops as you look down the list and the total medal count also drops as you go down the list. So the two of them do move in unison. We do have some exceptions, uh, notable exceptions. We have Spain, right? So if you look at Spain, they have three gold medals total, but 17 total medals, right? Which is more than nine, which is more than eight, what we see Jamaica, Norway above them and so on. So if you were to rank by total medal count, instead of 22nd, they would be somewhere around you know, 16, 17. Um, so, okay, 16, 17 from 22nd rank. Another notable exception, if we scroll down, we see Ukraine. They are ranked 44th with one gold medal, but 19 medals in total. And of course, you know, look at the number of silver and bronze, right? A lot more than their neighbors here, right? Neighbors in the, in the rankings, right? So 19 total medals, much more than two, two, three, four that countries around them have. So if you were to rank by total medals, then instead of being ranked 44th, they would be also around 16, 17, right? Where we have around 20 gold medals. Uh, so yeah, that's, that, that's a big difference in ranking, 44th uh, to 16th, 17th. But what we can do, we can actually plot the countries with their total medal count versus their gold medal count. And this is what we get, okay? So this is, uh, don't worry about this green column right here. I'll talk about that later. Uh, so we have gold medal count, total medal count. We just plot each country. Each country is a dot on this graph right here. Okay. And so you have gold medal count on the horizontal axis, total medal count on the vertical axis. And you see that they correlate quite well. Okay. If you create a line of best fit, which is this dotted line, Every big blue dot represents a country, right? They follow this line pretty well. And our exceptions of Spain and Ukraine, well, Ukraine is this dot right here. Spain is this dot right here. 
And if you compare them to everyone else who won the same number of gold medals, yeah, you got this row of gold medal winners right here um, who won the same amount as Ukraine. And Ukraine is, is higher up than this row here, right? So they stand out compared to the countries that won the same number of golds. This is Spain. It's the top one here in this row. But in terms of the general trend, they are not outliers. Okay, in terms of the general trend, you wouldn't look at those two dots and say, oh, they don't fit. No, they do fit, right? The general trend is countries tend to win more golds as they tend to win more total medals as well. And if you look at the R squared value, okay, so for those who aren't, who don't know what that means, the R squared value is a measure of how much in unison two variables behave. In this case, the variables are gold medal count versus total medal count. The closer R squared is to one, the more in unison they behave. Right? If they would fall perfectly on that dotted line, then R squared would be equal to one. The closer R squared is to zero, the more unrelated their behavior is. Here, R squared is incredibly close to one. 0 0.94, that's incredibly high correlation. Okay, it's almost, it's considered almost perfect correlation, right? Uh, one being perfect. So gold medal count and total medal count correlate incredibly well. As a country wins more golds, they tend to win more total medals as well, or vice versa. So what that tells us is, yeah, one ranking method may be better than the other, but in both cases, the rankings would be pretty similar. Pretty similar, because the, the variables of total and gold medal count behave so much like one another. Uh, these other numbers here, this is the equation of that line, so I'll explain what this means. Uh, then the last number right here, 1.96, it's approximately two. It says, well, how many medals do you expect a country to win if it has zero gold medals? Now here we're only looking at countries who have actually won at least one medal. Okay, so we're not considering countries who didn't win anything uh, in, in this data set here, right? So if you only look at countries that won at least one medal, well, countries that won zero golds, you expect that they won approximately two medals, right? So maybe uh, two bronzes, a bronze and a silver, two silvers. Uh, this number here, right, that you see multiplying X, that's how much total medals you expect a country's total medal count goes up by if their gold medal count goes up by one. And it's about 2.5, right? So for every additional gold medal that a country has, you expect they have an additional two and a half medals in total, right? One of those two and a half is the gold itself, right? So an additional one and a half medals, you know, an additional one or two medals that are some combination of bronze and silver. So what's this other method? Okay, what's this value that I'm talking about here? All right, so if we look at how much the gold, silver, and bronze medals are worth, if you melt down the metal, how much would that metal be worth? Well. A quick Google search showed that a gold is worth about 800 American dollars, a silver is worth about 450, and a bronze is worth much less, it's, it's worth five, okay? Um, so that's why you have gold and silver jewelry, you don't really have bronze jewelry, right? <laughs> so this, this is a point system that, unlike what we talked about before, you know, like three, two, and one, okay, 800, 450, and five, is actually based on a physical property. It's not arbitrary. It's based on a physical property, the property being how much that metal is worth. Now, these are some, like, I mean, 800, 450, these are big numbers. Five is a much smaller number. It, it could be tough for us to put it into perspective. So we can normalize these values where we divide each number by some constant to make the numbers easier to look at, right? So the numbers change, but the relative uh, difference between them remains the same, right? So if we divide each of these numbers by five, we get a gold is worth 160, uh, uh, fifths, <laughs> a hundred, not fifths, 160 five dollar bills. Right? Uh, a silver is worth 90 and a bronze is worth one, okay, one $5 bill. Uh, and now it's easier to put it into perspective because we see, okay, a bronze medal is worth 
one ninetieth of a silver medal, right? So one bronze medal is worth 90 silver medals in this point system. And one bronze medal is worth 160 gold medals, okay? Now, realistically, that's not going to happen. I mean, if, if you can win 90 bronze medals, you're probably winning a number of silvers and, and golds as well, right? If we look at our top winners here, um, the U.S., China, right? Their bronze medals, we're looking at 33, 18, and then further down, Japan, Great Britain, Russia, right? 22, 17, um, 23. So, and, and, they, and uh, you know, the number of golds is a comparable value, right? So, based on this point system here, you're not going to get a number of bronze medals that push you over top of someone who has more silver medals than you. Okay, that's not realistic, right? For, for you to have more than 90 bronze medals and not as many silvers as your opponent, even our exception, Spain and Ukraine, that wasn't the case for them, right? Uh, now, so effectively bronze is a tiebreaker if someone has the same number of, of golds and silvers. Um, now, silver, on the other hand, it's actually worth a little bit more than half of a gold. Okay, so two silvers, 90 times two, 180, two silvers is worth more than a gold. Okay, so that's an interesting dynamic in this point system. Uh, because if a country wins one gold and nothing else, another country wins two silvers and nothing else, well, the country with two silvers will actually be ranked higher. Right? And if we want to compare that to our previous two systems, okay, the gold medal count system where gold is worth one, silver and bronze are worth zero unless they're tiebreakers, and the total medal count system, where each medal is worth one point, right? So you're just looking at total number of medals won. Well, what we can do, we can further normalize this and divide each number by 160, okay? Or if we look at the original numbers, we're dividing each number by 800, right? So if you imagine there's such thing as an $800 bill, uh, a gold is worth one $800 bill, and a silver is worth 0 0.563, just over half of an $800 bill, and a bronze is worth 0 0.006 $800 bills. But we're just talking about points, right? A gold is worth one point, a silver is worth just over half a point, and a bronze is worth pretty much zero points, unless it's a tiebreaker kind of situation, right? Very little points for bronze. And when we write that here and we compare it to gold medal count, total medal count, we can actually see that it's a pretty similar system, okay? Gold medal is worth just as many points as for the other two systems. It's worth one point. Silver medal is somewhere in between, right? It's somewhere in between. Uh, in gold medal count, it's worth zero. A silver is worth zero. In total medal count, a silver is worth one. And in our value count system, a silver is worth 0 0.563, right? It's worth approximately half, right? So it's, it's about in between the two systems. And a bronze is worth pretty much zero unless it's a tiebreaker, which is like the gold medal count system. So this point system here, it's it's in between these two, maybe a little bit closer to gold because the bronze is also worth zero unless it's a tiebreaker, practically, um, whereas the silver is, is in between the two, right? So it agrees a little bit more with the gold medal count than the total medal count, but it is in between the two of them. So if gold medal count and total medal count correlate with each other so well and don't change the ranking so much, well, we expect that the value will also correlate well with them and will not change the ranking so much. And if we look at our value, okay, yeah, United States, right, the dollar amount of their medal winnings, it's about 50,000, and then China's a bit lower, 44,000, and then we have 27,000, 28,000, uh, that kind of range for Japan, Great Britain, Russia, and then we see the value drops as we go lower down the ranking list, the gold medal count ranking list, the value also goes down. If we look at our exceptions of Spain right here, 
6,000 and its neighbors have 4,000, 3,000, 5,000. Okay, it's a bit higher. If we look at Ukraine, oh, I just passed it. There we go. So 3,000, yeah, which is higher than its neighbors who have about 1,500, 2,000, but not outliers. And we can graph these values, okay? So here we have our value point system versus gold medal count. And look at our correlation, okay, our R squared value, 0 0.98. Okay, this is, it's even closer to one. And, and look how close the data points are to the line of best fit. Incredibly good correlation between the value of a metal ranking by, by that system and the gold medal count, okay? We don't see any outliers, okay? Very good uh, correlation. This 200 here means, okay, if someone won zero golds, what's the value that we expect of the medals that they did win and it's 200 which is approximately between the value of a bronze being five and the value of a silver being 450 right so they if they won no golds they they probably won a bronze or a silver again considering only countries that only won that, that won at least one medal and if we look at this value here 1200 that's multiplying x that's how much we expect the value of a country's winnings to increase for every gold medal, extra gold medal that they've won. Okay, and we expect it to increase by about 1,200. Okay, the gold medal itself is worth 800, right? So the rest of that, which is about 400, okay, we expect that, you know, a country that has won an additional gold, it probably also won a silver, right? Because, you know, there's that extra 400 uh, of value that their total value goes up by. If we plot our value points versus total metal count, again, we have very good correlation. 0 0.97 is our R squared value. Um, and look, it's a little bit lower than here, 0 0.98, right? Remember we talked about how this value-based point system, it's kind of between gold metal count and total metal count. Okay, so imagine if it's standing between them, it's closer to each of them than the two of them are to each other, right? So you expect it to have a correlation of value higher than 0.94, and that's exactly what we see. Okay, 0.98 versus 0.97, okay? Both correlation, both our squared values are higher than, uh, than how total count uh, and gold metal count compared to each other and it is a bit better correlation when you compare it to gold metal count okay r squared is a bit higher 0.98 and we talked about how this value system it is a little bit closer to the gold metal count system than the total metal count system because we have that bronze which is worth pretty much zero if, unless it's a tiebreaker all right um so that's what we see right we have a slightly better correlation right 0.98 for comparing it to gold medal count than to total medal count uh, now again comparing it to total medal count this uh, minus 512 okay so if a country won zero medals um, we expect it to have a value of negative 512 now on one hand you think okay that doesn't really make sense because uh, first of all, we're only looking at countries that won at least one medal, right? So a country winning zero medals is, is something we're not even considering in the data, right? So that number might be kind of meaningless. Um, on the other hand, that number is pretty close to zero. And you think, well, 500 is close to zero? Well, yeah, because look, our numbers go all the way up to 50,000. Okay, 500 is 1% of 50,000. It's very close to zero, right? So if a country won no medals, we expect it has pretty much zero value in, in terms of its winnings. That makes sense. How much additional value points does a country get for every gold medal it wins? We have 438, which is pretty close to 450, right? So every additional medal won is approximately a silver, right? It could be a gold, it could be a bronze, 
right? The average between gold and bronze is also going to be just over 400, right? Average between 800 and 5. Um, and, you know, for silver, it's 450. So that's a pretty reasonable number as well. Okay, suggesting we have approximately an equal number of gold, silvers, and bronze metals. One, or at least not too different of a number in terms of gold, metal, and bronze, silvers, one. And of course, the, the points fall very well on the line. And what's interesting is when we look at the data, regardless of which graph we look at, okay, value points versus total metal count, value points versus gold metal count, or total metal count versus gold metal count. What we see is our data forms certain clumps. We have, we have a lot of data points right here on the low end and a small number of countries that stretch out really here to the high end, right? So the further you are up this line, the more successful you are in terms of your winnings, okay? So we see that in, in all three graphs, right? A lot of countries clump at the bottom and, and a few stretch out and are the big winners, right? So we see that here and we see that in value points versus total metal count as well. A lot clump at the bottom here and then a few countries stretch out and are the big winners. We also can look at more details, right? And we kind of have five different groups here. Okay, so we have two countries that are way far ahead than anybody else. Right? That's the US and China. We have three countries, three or four maybe countries that are almost there, right? They're, they're really far up ahead of everyone else except for these two, right? And that's Japan, Great Britain, and Russia. And then we have another clump of countries right here. That's a, that's a bit farther ahead. Um, and this, I, I believe it's... Um, Oh, well, we'll look at the, at the chart, right? I believe uh, Germany, France, uh, let's see. Okay, Australia is kind of in the middle. There, so we have Netherlands, France, Germany, Italy. Okay, uh, there are, right, there's that clump right there. So these are the countries that won 10 gold medals, all right? So we have that clump of countries here. And on the lower end, we have kind of one big cloud. And then you see a little cloud separate right here, right? So it's like we have one tier, tier two, tier three, tier four, and tier five, right? And if we look at the other graph, we see those same groups again, right? Group one, the two that are way ahead, the three that are getting there. And you see Australia is kind of in between this group and this group right here, right? So so here Australia looks like it belongs more to the, uh, the third group right here. It looks like it belongs more to the second group or maybe in the middle. In any case, there's that third group right there and there's that fourth cloud and there's that fifth cloud down here. And when we look at total metal count versus gold metal count, we see the same thing. There's the two that are way up ahead, US and China. Then you have the three right here and your cloud right here, third cloud, right? Australia kind of in between, right? Kind of in between, sort of a part of, of this group right here, but, but also sort of in between. And then you have two clouds here in the lower end, one cloud and another cloud. And visualizing the data like this and these kind of clouds of data may be even more useful than a specific ranking, whether it's based on gold medals or total medals or our value point system, because it really shows, okay, what, what group is your, is your, is your winnings among, right? So we have, we have five groups here, right? We have the lower end, but they're still winners, right? Because we're only looking at countries that won at least one medal, right? A little bit higher, even higher than that. We have the runner up group and we have the big winners group. And that group, those groups, you know, what group you belong to is the same regardless of what parameters you are comparing, right? And even Australia, which is kind of jumping between groups, it is sort of in the middle in every case, right? Regardless of whether you consider it part of group two or group three over here. So I hope you enjoyed that as well. And 
And you know, I'm, I'm glad that the last video started this conversation and, and allowed this next video to be created. That's, that's awesome when that happens. So until next time, enjoy.